Hi guys, so in the last video we ended up making a brick pattern on a complex surface. Um, you can see I've gone in and, and made the surface a little more complex so we can play around with it uh, a little more and understand how the analysis is working. In this video we're going to try to analyze that surface to get some um, understanding of slope, so runoff, um, drainage patterns, things like that. So we have we have this surface. I am going to uh, make another copy of that and hide the line so we can start with that. So we want to use uh, each brick as an, an analysis point. So I'm going to get the area of each brick. Um, or actually. Uh, I'm going to use this surface, not the not the full surface, uh, so that it gives us gives us each brick, not the full, not the the center point of the surface. So here's the brick center points, and I want to um, I want to evaluate that so I can get a surface normal at each brick. So if I evaluate the surface, evaluate surface, you need the surface, and you need a UV point. So to get that, we actually need to see the closest point on the surface. We know these points are on the surface already, but to get the UV parameter of that, we evaluate it again. Plug that in there like that. And then we can use these UV points in here. So at each one of these, it makes a plane. We'll turn those display planes down. something smaller like that. Okay, so now we have this surface normal that's pointing in all different directions depending on, on the brick. So from there we can, let's, let's, let's visualize that at the point. We have the normal. You see that they're all pointing sort of down. Let's see if that comes into play. Uh, in a minute. So now um, I described in class how we can use a cross product and a cross product is really a vector math operation that will take any two vectors and find another vector that's perpendicular to both. So if you think of one vector being an x direction and one vector being a y direction, it'll give you the z direction. Um, and so in this case, if you had the x direction of this and the y direction of that, it would give you the uh, z direction of that plane. So I'm going to take the cross product. And I'm going to use that and the, the z direction of the file. So um, this direction that's normal to this plane and then the one that's globally pointing vertically. So that has something to do with say gravity and how the water might drain. So if I use that one, it'll give me another vector. And I want to show that vector a little bit longer. So I'm going to make that amplitude And what, what this does is now gives you 
an arrow that's pointing exactly horizontal. So this would follow any sort of contours that are around that point. Hide some of these other things. You can see that. I can make this a little bit longer. And those are starting to follow that slope horizontal. You can see in some cases where they spiral around, you've reached the top. Yeah. Okay, but we don't want the horizontal direction, we want the downward direction. So in that case, I'm going to use another cross product. And I'm going to plug in uh, this vector right here and the original vector. So the original vector is pointing up. We have a sideways vector, so now we should have a downward vector. So this is running off of this edge. Let's give it a little more length, say 20. So if you zoom into that, you can see how that would sort of run off in that direction. So that gives us some capability of uh, finding slope direction and, and runoff. Let's visualize that a, a little bit further. So instead of having this vector display, I'm going to have a vector display x. It's essentially the same thing. I'm going to hide this one. And this one allows you to adjust some other things. Let's see if I can point this up a little bit. So what it allows you to do is, one, you could set the color. You can also set the width. So I'm going to add... Um, It's going to be too much, but the width of this can be adjustable. So, for instance, you can set the higher slope to have a thicker, thicker line weight or a lower slope, however you want. And then you can also set the color. So, in this case, you can set the swatch color to white and it would turn all of those white. Okay, I'm going to group these together and say um, runoff analysis. So I can also start to use use this to um, adjust the colors of those arrows a little bit more. So um, I could potentially use the, as I was saying before, the slope to adjust the line weight or, or the color. Um, I have X, Y, Z values. I could say use the normals to give it a different color or a different um, uh, visualization. So what information you could pull out of that. I could come up here and say what what level of Z maybe. If I wanted to give these a color. Um, maybe I'll pick from color XYZ or something like that. See what this does. Oh, it's all black. That's no fun. Oh, that's interesting. It gives all the slopes uh, sort of facing this direction a red, and all, all the ones facing that direction a black. 
This does it in that direction. Anyway, you can start to use those for other operations. Um, so I'll, I'll start to see if I can uh, analyze that surface a little further in, in the next video.